Hi everyone, I'm Justin Skaggs from Style & Strings Lacrosse, and I'm the Director of Lacrosse Operations here at Style & Strings, one of the country's oldest and most respected stringing operations. This is string league off-season practice. So what we're doing is myself and three other amazing stringers are all coming together to show you guys some advanced level stringing techniques. Now this may not be the perfect pocket for you, it's definitely not the perfect pocket for me, but what we're doing is we're showing you guys some things that you may not normally employ. So whoever you're stringing it for, whether it's yourself or a customer or anything of that nature, pay attention, learn these techniques, and try to work them into your stringing game. Maybe you can get it up to the next level before String League Season 2 on February 2nd. So what we're going to be working on today is the bottom half, or in some situations this will actually take up the bottom third of the head and a bottom string. What this is going to do is it's going to lead the ball into the channel, and as you cradle, dodge, and do a lot of those techniques, this is going to be what determines how the ball moves in the pocket, whether it gives you a nice sway or it's very stiff, very sturdy. Now, if you're watching this, you should have already watched Joe create this section, which is the top half, which is the channeling portion, as well as Connor create the top. So we're going to put it from the inside of the pocket towards the face of the stick, and we're going to pull it out towards the back, this area. What you want to do is you want to take a pair of pliers, or if you got strong enough hands, go for it, and then we're actually going to crease the mesh outward like this, and buckle it like that. Now as we lace it through, and this is going to be the exact same sidewall attachment method that we're going to use the entire way down, we're going to go through the outside of the head into the inside, and we're going to lock it off. Everything from here forward is going to be an open sidewall structure so that the ball can swing back and forth a little bit, give you a little bit more control as you're going through your dodge. Now, as you can see, that kept this piece of mesh nice and neat. That's an aesthetic. That is absolutely not a functional piece, but if you're going to go ahead and enter into something like String League, that needs to also be the detail that you're looking at. Now, with the King, it's got a nice long throat, and with what Joe did here, he already channeled it pretty aggressively. So since this is channeled, we now want to pull the pocket down a little bit. Now, there are going to be people who want a high pocket, but for your average Joe player to get a nice fluid release on a pocket that's this narrow, that already has this much channeling put into the top half, we're going to work it down here. We're going to do that with a double, but until we get there, we're just going to work our way right down the head. So again, we're going to match each of those knots going from the inside of the head to the outside. We're going to skip one hole. And we're going to lock it. When you're at this point in the game, you really want to just sort of feel how the pocket's going to work out for you. You know where you want the general ball to be. You can always stick your hand in and see where the slouch is. When you get to where you want the sweet spot, then we're going to start closing it up and tapering it down. It's also really important if you look at this knot right here, that you get these creases to actually line up right along the side of the plastic head where it points down to a tip. That's going to stop you from getting unexpected slack as the pocket gets deeper. So I got down a little bit of a ways here, and I'm going to build the other side out real quick so I can see exactly what it is I'm working with. If you don't have both of these sides done perfectly and you're moving yourself down, you could come out with a surprise when you tie your final knot. You could find that your pocket's actually shifted somewhere where you don't really want it to be. Double checking on this side, I've skipped a hole every single time. Leaves me with a nice pattern to catch up to myself on side B here. Now I have the identical pocket string on each side, and I could put my hand in here and really see how the pocket actually flares itself out. Right now, if I were to just continue closing this pocket off without doing a double, the pocket would probably sit here, maybe a little lower. I'm going to go back and I'm going to put a double in this area right here that I've already had closed off. Never be afraid to go backwards, it doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong. To really study the exact sidewall structure of something you've never strung before, you're always going to need to try one or two things to make sure it's perfect. As you're pulling these things through, if you see that they're starting to buckle weird, you can always grab the slack and push the mesh down onto the knot that uh, is holding it in place above it. That's going to get you the crease that you want that's going to maintain that aesthetic look. I'll show you here in a second. Now I have my hitch, I got my mesh in there. You put your hand in there, you can see that these are both creasing. You can even move this guy down a little bit and affect the buckle. Make sure that everything's in line. So since we have our double employed here, I'm going to actually pretty much end this off. Sometimes, if the head was just a little bit longer or if the mesh structure was just a little bit different, I would put another diamond in underneath. But since we have all these nice holes down here, I'm given this ability and I'm going to close off the bottom section of the pocket with the bottom string here in a moment. So I'm going to take that liberty and I'm going to go in to the head, then outside of the head. And as you pull it, on a very rare circumstance, you'll actually get it so you have a nice clean knot. You don't have to pull it to the inside of the head so that whenever it pinches and it gets older, it starts grabbing onto the ball. This is a very clean way to close off a stick. 
and a single overhand knot will work. If you want to get fancy and do a double, you're welcome to. So for the U-shooter, it's usually easier if you hold it like this. This is actually a girl shooter or a top string, depending on what camp you're from. We're gonna make it so that everything on the bottom is coming from the outside of the head in. You do that by starting in the center. Your knot's actually gonna be placed on the inside of the head. This might seem unconventional until you bring it back out right there. So now you can see it's gonna be buckling around the back. What that's gonna do is when the ball sits there, it's actually gonna have this nice little plastic ridge that can nestle. And since we're doing a low pocket, a one-handed cradle is gonna be a real monster on this thing. This is gonna accentuate that cradling type. Now a good rule of thumb is if you can get it to the next diamond row right beneath where you stopped on the sidewall, put it right through there. Also a 10 diamond row gives you a full string through and you don't have to skip any diamonds. So we're gonna just go in and out all the way across. I'm gonna buckle this down for vision, but you can, uh, you'll can you be able to see how that actually goes right back into its bell-shaped curve when we're done. Going right back in the way I started, pull that back out. And again, let's go to the inside of the head you see this pop back out towards the center hole. Now there's a lot of different ways to do a bottom string. There's a lot of different ways to do a lot of things. But if you do a simple U, you really accentuate that curve. And if you do two, you really have to watch where you put it because you actually are creating a point of slack. So this is gonna be something a little bit easier. If you're doing a nice bottom pocket, this will be great for one-handed cradles. I'm gonna close this off with a simple overhand knot. Don't go crazy with your bottom string holes, especially until this thing's broken in. This is gonna be what you're gonna be tearing apart and you're going to be adjusting to create the appropriate depth for uh, pocket legality. So let's take a look at this. As you can see, as I push into it, it creates tension on the bottom string, pulls it slack right here, which is also generally above where I did the double. If you were to tighten this, it would lower the pocket and pull it back towards the double. When you're done, it's really important, just take a look. Make sure that it's got that nice bell-shaped curve. It has those flat spots still retained from what Joe had done, and that the bottom string accentuates the actual flow of the pocket. So what you can see now is a nice gradual slope going towards the top. That's going to limit the amount of whip, and that's really important. And this area right here that we just did is actually what allows you to have a nice channel pocket without a tremendous amount of whip, which is a very complex relationship between the two things. That takes care of my section, which is the bottom half or bottom third, depending on how you're stringing it. I'm gonna toss this off to Greg, who has a lot to talk about, given that this year we have a bunch of new rules and new regulations giving our shooting string structures and how they need to be measured. So this might be the biggest change for any youth stringer, and I really want you guys to pay attention to that because it's a quick way to get a penalty, and you as stringers are gonna be the ones who have the chance to fix it ahead of time. One more time, guys, I'm Justin Skaggs from Stylin' Strings Across. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel or at Stylin' underscore strings on Instagram to check out all of the pockets we're making all of the time. I really want you guys to practice, 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 because February 2nd is the open entry date for String League. Go to at String League on Instagram.com and go to at Stylin underscore strings for more inspiration on how to enter and win this year's competition. I can't wait. I'm absolutely ecstatic, and I really hope to see some amazing stuff this year.